بسم الله والصلاه والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد حبت في الله it was brought to my attention from one of my habibs wa rajul mahboob indi from the uk from uh, london he sent me a clip which has recently been published on the youtube and it was entitled something like does s pubs call to his beer or call to uh, salafia or something similar to that and it was published by brothers upon salafia so first and foremost i wanted to distance myself from the association with that clip in which is being used as a tool to attack Salafi publications. And I have several reasons for that. But first and foremost, that we have to be honest, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, حَتَّبَرْحَانَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادَقِينَ Bring your proof, bring your evidence if you are being truthful. So although it was real speech, which was taken from my YouTube channel, which I have no problem with people using it if it's used with the correct intent uh, and there is no cut and pasting without authorization. And in this case, which we see is the case, unfortunately, with many of the ulama and much of the fitna that we see and discord that we see between Ahl Sunnah and we see amongst the Hizbiyin and Ahl Sunnah, that many people, we live in a time of cutting and pasting. And you'll find so many clips on the internet if you look. And for those who knew Arabic, if you look in the sources on YouTube, for example, you'll find so many refutations, alleged refutations of Sheikh Rabi from Sheikh Salah bin Fawzan or Sheikh Al-Albani uh, against Sheikh so-and-so and Sheikh so-and-so against Sheikh so-and-so. And when you listen, you'll find that the Sheikh is giving a general hukum about something. And then the people, and usually the people of Hezbiyah do this, is they will take it out of context and tatabbak hadha ala ma'ayaneen. And they will apply that to a specific individual or a specific organization or a specific dawah group or what have you. Now, I'm not saying that our brothers uh, did this necessarily with malicious intent, but I want them to be honest and I want them to remove the... Uh, claim that this is me speaking against Salafi publications or this is that it's a refutation against Salafi publications. I may have my own reservations and my own uh, mulahadhat with regards to Salafi pubs and other organizations. However, we have to be honest and if someone is directly speaking about someone and they've named them, then we don't need to assume, we don't need to stretch, we don't need to specify and as was general in my speech, in that it was a general uh, refutation, if you will, against anyone with those traits, regardless of Salafi publications or any other organization that may possess the traits of Hezbiyah, we stand against Hezbiyah. Hadha da'wah to Ahl Sunnah. And that's what the clip was basically saying. And the clip began with a quote of Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi, which is an excellent reminder about the da'wah to Salafiyah. That the da'wah to Salafiya, da'wah to Ahl Sunnah, kama qala Sheikh, da'wah to Ahl Sunnah, da'wah to min kitabi la ila kitabi la, wa min sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, ila sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. So it's very important that we understand that our da'wah is not to ourselves, it's not to our organization, not to our group, and we cannot cut and paste, and we cannot use things just to affirm our cause out of context. So we have to be very cautious. So this is an advice from my brothers. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, a deen and nasiha, this deen, the, the religion is sincere advice. So it's first and foremost, a, an advice for my brothers. And it is also a distancing myself, not because I fear consequences, but I'm going to tell you why. So first and foremost, a, a habitafillah, why? I haven't spoken about Salafi publications or, or too many other uh, 
Dawa organizations that are closely aligned with us for that very reason. Because we have the same Mashaikh mostly, except for the ones that they've distanced themselves and taken off the Sunnah in accordance with their perspective. Uh, whether I see it as just or unjust, whether I see it as Hezbiya or, or not Hezbiya, my point is this, is the Menhaj, the Usul, is more or less the same. The Usul is more or less the same. So that's first and foremost. And I, we had a gathering uh, in Medina uh, many years ago. This is when Shadid Muhammad, I think his last year before he graduated, and our brother Nader, who used to be with uh, uh, Medina.com when they were really close friends. And w myself and Shadid and Nader, we went to see Sheikh, uh, Sheikh uh, uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab al-Aqil, one of our fudala, one of our mashayikh in from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, uh, there in Medina, a professor at Jama'a Islamiyah, doctor, and an esteemed, beautiful beautiful caller to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on and so forth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him and preserve us as well. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So we went to go see the Sheikh and one of the questions we asked, and this was my question, was, and it's all been recorded, if I can find the recordings, but one of the questions, and I think it was unpublished on Medina.com as well, that was what, how, how should those people who are trying to practice the sunnah, basically, how should they deal with those, uh, their brothers who are extreme? And how should they deal with their brothers are mumayya, if you will, who have thrown away the pro, 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 uh, principles of Ahlul Sunnah or some of the principles that they're weak in some of the principles, for example, when they're cooperating with Ahl Bid'ah and in their uh, other activities, which are a belittling of the sunnah or principles of Ahl Sunnah. How should we deal with them? So the Sheikh, I'll never forget this, and it's recorded. He said that those who are more extreme are closer to us. And so I think all of us were uh, a bit taken aback by that answer. He said, those who are more extreme are closer to us. And he, the reason he said this, and it's not that we support any extremism or anything, but it's because they have the tendency to be more adherent to those principles, but then they go beyond the bounds in other principles. They violate some principles, but they are very adherent in calling and sometimes sticking to some of the usul of Ahl Sunnah, which is very important. Whereas you have another group, the other group tends to throw away many principles and, and then tend to go astray. So this is why, this is in light of what the Sheikh uh, said and what he explained to us, which was a very beneficial fa'idah and shows his ilm and his fiqh fi deen. And so going back to this issue and why I'm clarifying this for number one is because uh, as far as sp speaking about the mistakes of particular DAO organizations, for example, S pubs or what have you, or many areas that I disagree with them and, and so on and so forth, by publicizing those things, there are many problems and there's many mufasid. And this is what I don't see for some of the people who spend excessive er uh, efforts and making videos and making uh, refutations. Now, refutations, as long as they're knowledge-based, that's okay. But when you expend uh, excessive energy on those closest to you and you leave off all of Ahl Bidah Khalis, those people who, who are Ahl Tasawwuf, when Hamza Yusuf can sit in his chair and be an international figure uh, so comfortably, and when uh, the Yaqeen Institute and all these other Dawah organizations that are clearly uh, mostly on foundations that go against the, the, the uh, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, and you leave them comfortable, and you leave them relaxed, but yet you spin refutation and refutation against your brothers, this is problematic. And this is what we see from many of the parties, whether that be S pubs and some other groups that are associated with them and others that are against them, that it becomes a tit for tat and all of this energy is wasted on those who are closest to you. You literally have the same ulama or yesterday it was one of your ulama, but yet you have built a whole new menhaj of destroying one another. So that's number one. 
Number two, that uh, that aside from being closest to us, is that a lot of the Dao organizations, or there are many Dao organizations, there are people from Ahl Sunnah, many Salafis that are not down with the many mistakes that Salafi publication has that are open and hidden. And so now we live in a time where we don't have to go to any particular, no one has a monopoly as uh, Sheikh Tahir mentioned, I think some years ago in his, uh, in a lecture and as well in our brother uh, Sajid Lipham and uh, Muhammad Munir and Ali Davis and, and, and Abu Sajid and all the, our, our Ikhwa min Ahl Sunnah, that they have uh, spent effort in making these things clear. And, and of course, it comes first and foremost from our ulama. Our ulama have said that Sheikh Suleiman Rahali, and on and on and on and on. We don't need to. These are things we should know. But instead, people have gone away and gotten extreme in some of the principles of Ahl Sunnah, meaning to Jawaz al Had, means they go beyond the bounds. The Had, the Sunnah says this, but they go beyond it, thinking that they've achieved some other uh, purpose. And a lot of times it is Hezbi, it's calling to yourself instead of calling to the Sunnah. So, my point being, Habitavillah, is that the Hizbis rejoice in these things. And so that also leads into the third point I want to mention. So the third point being is that there is a, when we look at the Masalih and the Mufasid of an issue like this, of speaking against those who are very close to you, often you see with a lot of, especially putting, devoting a lot of energy into that, you see that the Mufasid is greater than the Masalih, meaning that there is more harm than benefit. And you will see that the youth become more splitted because these are youth that are following and they love the Mashaikh and they love the, some of them just want the truth. Some of them are literally cult followers and blind followers. Yes, we recognize that. We recognize the Hezbiya that's going on and some extreme Hezbiya, some dangerous statements that even sometimes go to the extent of Ibadah. And we can't deny it. It's just, it's documented heavily, immensely, intensely. So we see also, though, there are many youth who just want to follow the sunnah. And they believe so-and-so has a tazkiyah, so they listen to them. Regardless of how old it was, regardless of what. And, and again, that even the tazkiyah, it's not a nas shari. It's not anything that is, doesn't mean the person can't go astray. Doesn't mean the person doesn't make a mistake. Doesn't mean the tazkiyah was incorrect. There's so many issues with that. But however, we wanted, uh, what I wanted to mention is it, uh, it often causes a greater confusion for the youth if you take a position and you're continually feeding that position. Now, it's no mystery that I have love for many du'a to Ahl Sunnah who are, uh, uh, who are not down with those guys and who have, uh, you know, have had discord with them. For example, from the UK, I can mention, for example, uh, Ustad Abu Taymiyyah and uh, Abdurrahman Hassan and many, 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 many other ones that are callers to the book in the Sunnah who are have ilm wa fiqh and have room for growth because they're young in age. But what they will, if, if Allah favors them to keep on that, then what they have to offer will be even greater in the future bi idnillah ta'ala and far surpass what many of us who are older have done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion. So it's very important to recognize that. And although I may have love and, and would ta'awin and, 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 and speak to some of those brothers, that doesn't mean that every single issue or every single statement that we're always going to be in agreement. Okay, and those when when it becomes a shart or a condition that you must agree with someone and everything, then that shows then those are traits of hezbiya. So your brother can can make a mistake, and you can make a mistake, and it's upon you to advise one another. So my point being a habitafillah is that it can cause a greater 
disunity and it causes the Hizbi to rejoice when there's a difference, when there's differences between Ahl Sunnah, then you have all these Sufis like what's his, the one in Oxford University, I can't think of his name right now, well known, uh, and, and others and Hamza Yusuf and others, they rejoice because they say, we told you so, we're the real Ahl Sunnah, even though there's no doubt they are pure Khalis, like melting with bid bid'ah drips from them, like butter, like melted butter, bid'ah is just spreading wherever they go. Uh, and so with that being the case, these people rejoice when they see this discord and they see this disharmony and they see this disunity between Ahl Sunnah and the people of Takfir, or they love it. And the people of Hezbi and the Hezbi organizations, they thrive off the discord. So it not only can aid their cause and fatten them, but it can they can also use those uh, refutation and use those things out of context or in context to cause more fitna and to belittle the dawah in general and to belittle the ulama sunnah in general. So it's very important and I just wanted to make my mokif clear because it uh, because it came to me in, in, in a video form from one of my videos but then it was cut and paste all of these uh, statements about uh, from Abdullah and from uh, Abu Khadija and other people other du'at that uh, to make it seem as if I was saying that they're a Hizbi organization or they're callers to Hizbiya. But as I asked our brothers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us in them and bless us in them and guide us in them, that I requested that they take the S pubs connotation off there or remove my voice off there and my name. So that way, it is clear that that is not my intent. My intent there, as it has been with the da'wah that I've been propagating for years, is to show in general, to give you the tools, so that way you can have the binoculars and the glasses and the, the scientific instruments to see what's right and wrong. But not necessarily, and especially when it comes to those aqrab ilayna, those people who are closest to us, not to use his tools and not to speak and show more discord and disharmony and disunity as it, as it, uh, as it continues to take place. And this is, and, and on the last note, and this is one of the reasons why you have never heard me really, except for making an ishara or making a point on a few, on a few occasions uh, about this issue of sa'afika and the and the ones who are not sa'afika or whatever, all of this confusion because that's what it is. There's no benefit. There is zero benefit for Ahl Sunnah. There's zero benefit from the Muslim, especially if they don't know Arabic. And especially if they can't even get to the ulama and get to this, then why are they immersing themselves in this type of discord and fitna and disharmony? Why Ahl Bid'ah is laughing and rejoicing and fattening their beast-like bellies at the way some of Ahl Sunnah busy them and behave. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala Nabiya Muhammad.